So you want to create an e-commerce store and you've chosen WordPress as your preferred platform to do so. But since you just want to sell a few eBooks, you see no point in using plugins like WooCommerce or easy digital downloads that seem complicated to you. So you're looking for an alternative that will make your life easier and allow you to be in business faster. Well, look no more because there is an alternative and it's called ShareCart. Hello, I'm Kay from the Astra team and today I'm going to teach you how to create an e-commerce store for digital products with ShareCart. Now, let's take a look at what we're going to build. So in this video, you will learn how to install and set up ShareCart, how to create products, you will learn how to create and edit checkout forms, how to create custom checkout forms and pages, you will learn how to link your navigation to your customer dashboard so that the customers can see if they have any plans available, they can see their downloads and downloads their purchase files, see and add their payment methods and history, and download their invoices. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. But first of all, let's talk about why you may want to use ShareCard compared to other WordPress e-commerce plugins. So first of all, let's take a look at the key features. And we're going to compare Easy Digital Downloads, WooCommerce, and ShareCart. So in the next slide, it's actually the same slide, but I've just put some color codes. So you can see right away with the green code what ShareCart does. And we can see right away, so where I haven't put any color codes, usually it means that they all do the same thing like the guest checkout, the checkout forms, and so on. Now, for example, if we take a look at payment gateways, we can see that ShareCard has multiple built-in options without the need of additional add-ons or extensions. The test mode is easy to activate. Product pricing, once again, ShareCard's got multiple built-in options. And when it comes to forms customizations, ShareCard has extensive options, whereas Easy Digital Downloads or EDD is limited, and the same goes for WooCommerce. Now, when it comes to security tools, EDD and ShareCard have built-in options, whereas WooCommerce requires add-ons. And when it comes to built-in integrations, both EDD and WooCommerce need extensions or add-ons, whereas ShareCard offers integrations to all famous learning plugins like LearnDash, for example. Okay, next, let's take a look at the shopping features. And when it comes to the shopping features, apart from the first three elements like guest checkout, refunds, and coupons, discounts that are the same across the board, except that ShareCard has more extensive options for coupons and discounts. But for the rest, when it comes to subscriptions, recurring payments, installments, donations, pay what you want, renewal discounts, order bumps, car saving, and abandoned cart management, EDD and WooCommerce need extensions or add-ons, depending on which platform you are, except for the cart saving, because EDD has that built in. But for all the rest, in ShareCard, these are built-in features. And best of all, many of these are even built in the free version of ShareCard. Now, let's take a look at the customization features. And once again here, when it comes to checkout form customization, card customization, customer dashboard customization, we can see that for easy digital downloads, it's quite complex and needs coding. Now, when it comes to WooCommerce, you can partially do these customizations, but add-ons are required for more control. But now if we take a look at ShareCard, yes, you get full control with the block editor. And when it comes to the global branding, it's built in. Now, don't get me wrong, all three platforms are great tools. And when someone wants to build an e-commerce store with WordPress, WooCommerce often comes to mind. But should you always use WooCommerce? Or should you give ShareCard a chance? Let's take a look. So when it comes to WooCommerce, it's great for big online stores with thousands of products and very complex stores. But you have to know that it has a steep learning curve. That's the truth. Many things to learn. And if you just want to build a simple website with you know, a couple of eBooks, you may not have the time or you may not want to go through that steep learning curve. Next, it can be complex to find extensions to achieve the desired outcome. Maybe you have an idea of what you want to do, but you have to go through the various extensions, not knowing which one to use, and maybe they don't play along so well, which brings me to my next point. You need to rely on third-party extensions that are not always optimal. So because there's a difference in quality, so you may have very great extensions from WooCommerce, but then maybe some of the features you want are not served by WooCommerce. So you're going to get third-party extensions and many of these do a great job, but sometimes you may come across an extension that is really not well coded, doesn't have the options you want, and it doesn't feel like it's the same thing. So you have the core 
WooCommerce and then you have some extensions, but they don't feel quite like the same thing. The quality is not the same. Now, when it comes to Surecard, well, Surecard is great for digital goods and simple products, but today we're going to talk about digital goods. So first of all, it's easy to get started. You can literally start selling in minutes, as you'll see in this video. Next, it's got more built-in features, and we just saw that previously with the tables I showed you. Next, it's faster and it's headless. And what I mean by headless is that most of the things are happening on Surecard server, even in the free version. So it's less stress on your actual WordPress install. It's also safer. Now we all want fast websites and especially Google. So if you can make your website faster, it's definitely a plus. Next, it's cheaper. Now it's going to be hard to compare the pricing across the three platforms for all of the features, but let's just take a look at one feature. So let's say you want subscriptions on your website. Then at the minimum on easy digital downloads, you need to get the extended plan. And then and only then can you get the subscriptions. And this is just one feature. Okay. Keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at WooCommerce. So they sell this extension or add on called WooCommerce subscriptions. And bear in mind that with this pricing, you only get subscriptions. You don't get anything else. Now, when it comes to Surecard, even in the free version, you get subscriptions. And if you do need advanced features for subscriptions, you can upgrade to the starter plan, which is half the price that what you would pay for the WooCommerce extension. And once again, bear in mind, you only get that extension or add-on and half the price that you would pay for the extended plan on easy digital downloads. And if you look at the rest of the Surecard starter plan, you also get free trials, paid trials, upgrade path, auto payment recovery, checkout forms, Zapier integration, and much, much more. I'll let you read through it so you can also compare with the business and pro plans. And if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, let's get started with building our e-commerce store. And the first step is to get our domain and hosting. So we'll go to the SiteGround website, you'll find links in the description below. And then we click on view plans and we'll go for the startup plan. So click on get plan. And next you want to type your domain name. So your preferred domain or whatever you want.com and then click on proceed. So if you're in the US, you get the first year for free for the domain. And after that, you need to pay $19.99. So Click on proceed and yes, congratulations, your preferred domain.com is available for free registration with your hosting account. And then you want to provide an email address and a password and confirm the password. Make sure you write down the password and don't forget it. Then you want to fill in the client information, put your credit card number and then just proceed, review the deal and just click on pay now. Now we already have an account. So the next thing you want to do once you're logged into your dashboard is to click on the website tab. And next you want to click on new website. And in your case, since you just got a new domain, you may want to click on select existing domain. Now, if you just got the domain, it might take a few minutes for the domain to be effective. So in this case, you may want to use a temporary domain. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to choose temporary domain. Next, click on continue, then click on start a new website. And as we scroll down, we want to select WordPress. Next, you want to set up your login credentials. So you're going to type an email address and then you're going to type a password or you can ask it to generate the password. Make sure you safely save this information and then click on continue. Next, on the following screen, click on finish. And next, sit back and relax. It should take approximately less than two minutes. And voila, we're all set. So next, click on Login in Admin. Okay, next you're greeted with the WordPress starter from SiteGround, but we don't want to use it. So just click on Exit. Okay, next you want to go to Appearance, Themes, then click on Add New. And for this tutorial, we're going to use the Astra theme. So just type Astra, click on Search, and click on Install. Then click on Activate. Okay, let's check. So if you go back to Appearance, themes, we can now see that the Astra theme is activated. Now this is our current website, so not really what you probably had in mind, but let's fix this. Okay, next in WordPress, you want to go to Astra dashboard and next you want to click on starter templates. Click on install and activate and you'll be taken to this page. And by the way, starter templates allow you to create beautiful websites in just a few clicks. So next click on build your website now. 
and select block editor. Next, I can just go through the categories drop downs or I can scroll and select the design I like. But here I'm just going to go to the search field and type ebook. OK, great. I like this one. So here I can see a preview. I can upload my logo, but I'm just going to click on skip and continue. And here I can change the color scheme. For example, I could pick that one. But once again, I like the default one. So I'm just going to keep this one here. And next, I can also change the font pairs. But once again, I'm going to keep the default one. And by the way, if you want to know how to completely customize your website with the Astra WordPress theme, we've created a masterclass video and I'll put the link in the description below. OK, next, let's click on continue. And next, before we click on submit and build my website, if you want to help us serve you even better and create even better products, you may want to tell us a little bit about yourself. So just enter your detail and choose the appropriate options. And next, click on submit and build my website. And there you go. Sit back, relax and enjoy the short flights. And voila, your website is ready and it took just 19 seconds to build. And I'm not even kidding. So of course, feel free to tweet your new achievement and next click on view your website. And there it is, looking beautiful. OK, next in the top left corner in the toolbar, hover over the name of your website and click on dashboard. So in the WordPress admin, you want to go to plugins, add new. Then in the search field, you want to type share cart and click on search. Click on install and activate. Next, you want to go to share cart, get started. Click on set up my store, fill in the details. Now, of course, you could also use your Google account. But here I'm just going to click on sign up. And here you can decide which plan you want to go for. And for this tutorial, we just need the free plan. So click on select plan. Next, enter your store details and click on next step. Now on this screen, you can connect a payment processor, but we'll do this later. So I'm just going to click on or connect payment processors later. Next, you want to copy this API token to WordPress and you have a little clickable icon here. Just click it and it's copied. So make sure you save this information in a safe place because you will need it. Next, click on back to WordPress. And here you can paste the API token you just copied. Click on complete installation. Now, very, very important. Once you sign up with ShareCard, you're going to get two emails. And the second email says, please verify your ShareCard email. So all you have to do is click on this big button. Make sure you do it because otherwise some things are not going to work. OK, next, let's configure ShareCard. So in WordPress, you want to go to ShareCard settings. And there are many options here that are plenty self-explanatory when you click on the tabs. But for this tutorial, we're going to focus on the taxes and the processors. So let's start with the taxes. Now, taxes are crucial when it comes to an e-commerce website. And I strongly advise you go and check with a professional accountant. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to enable tax collection and enable a fallback rate of 20%. Now, I know which country is going to be different, but that's why I'm using a fallback rate just for this tutorial. So next, you want to add an address, click on save. And if you are in the EU, I got good news for you because it comes with EU VAT settings. As you may know, there are so many rules and regulations in Europe. So here you can enable the VAT number requirement, local reverse charge and the VAT number verification failure. Next, payment processors. We're going to choose Stripe. So click on Stripe. And here, very important, you can either use it in live mode or in test mode. Now for this tutorial, of course, I want to use the test mode. So let me click on test mode. And now I can click on connect. Now, of course, if you don't have a Stripe account yet, just go and create one. It's completely free. But in my case, I already have a Stripe account. So I just type the email address linked to that account. Then click on continue. Then type your password and click on login. Next, verify your login with the code that was sent to your mobile phone or any other authentication mode that you chose. Choose your account if you have several accounts, then click on connect. And voila, you successfully connected to Stripe. Can you believe how easy that was? OK, now that we've got Sharecard set up, it's time to create our products and pages. And let's create our products first. So in WordPress, you want to go to Sharecard products. Then you want to click on add new. Next, give your product a name and click on create. And now click on add a price. 
And here you can select if it's a one-time, an installment or a subscription. Yes, even in the free plan. But we're going to keep it simple. It's just an ebook, so it's going to be a one-time price of $9. We could also add a sales price or allow customers to pay what they want. And you can set a minimum price or a maximum price. But once again, we're going to keep it simple. And before we click on create price, you can decide here whether or not the tax is included. So I'm going to select this option. Next, click on create price. Next, we don't need any integrations, but if we did, we would click on add new integration. And here we could choose from a few options like e-learning platforms and more. But let's close this. Next, you want to click on add downloads. And here you have two options, either a secure storage option or an external link. So if your file is on an external server, you can choose that option, give the link a name, and then just paste the link URL but we're not going to use this option. Instead, we're going to select Secure Storage. And here we can upload our file. So click on Upload Media and select your file. Click on Open. Next, click again to select your file and click on Choose. And that's it, your download has been added. And as you can see with a little badge here, it's secured. And by the way, yes, even in the free version, you get file storage, you get 500 megabytes. So back to WordPress, now in the second column, you can set whether or not the product is available for purchase. Next, you have the tax and shipping. You can decide whether or not to charge tax on this product, whether or not this is a physical product, which is not the case here, and if this product requires shipping. Next, you can add a product image. So click on add image, click on upload media, and select your image. Click open, click to select your uploaded image and click on choose. Next, we have an option to limit per customer purchases. So you could limit the number of times a single customer could purchase this product, but we don't need that option. Next, click on save product. Okay, let's create a new product. So once again, I'm gonna to go to shortcut products, add new. So give it a product name, click on create. I will go a little bit faster for this one. So add a price, $12, taxes included. And I click on create price. Next, add downloads, secure storage, upload media. And I'm going to pick this one. I select the file I just uploaded, click on choose. This is not a physical product and I want to charge tax. Add a product image. I select my image and click on choose and click on save product. Great, so we created a couple of products and as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. But now, how do you link the products to the pages on your website? And how do you set up the checkout process? So first, let's take a look at the front end of our website. So this is the home page, and we can see we have a few elements, we have some book covers. But if we scroll back up and look in the navigation, we got our books page. So let's go there. And as we scroll down, once again, we have the main call to action here, the main book with a button to purchase. For the moment, it does nothing. So if I click on it, nothing happens because it's like a void link. So if I scroll down, I see some more books with call to actions, but these don't link to anything. So what we want to do is we want to link the couple of books that we added to the product pages. And if we take a look in the WordPress dashboard, we go to pages, all pages we can see that we have a few pages here. Some of the pages were installed when we installed the starter template and others were installed when we installed Sharecard, like checkout, purchase confirmation, purchase history, transaction failed, checkout, which is going to be the standard page for all products, unless we specify otherwise, as we'll see in a moment. And then we also have our customer dashboard. So let's take a look at our store checkout. So hover over checkouts and click on view. And there it is, a beautiful checkout page. Now this page uses a form. And if you want to see or edit that form, you can go to Sharecart, Forms. And as you can see by default, when we installed Sharecart, it automatically created a form. So click on edit. And here we have a form block. So once you've selected your form block here on the right hand side, you have a few options like changing the form template, styling the form. You can change the form highlight color, the row gap. Next, you can decide whether or not you want to enable a custom thank you page. 
But as we saw, when we installed Shortcard, it automatically created a thank you page for us. But if you wanted, you could choose custom thank you page and then search for the page that you created. But we're going to keep it simple here. Next, you can customize the loading text, the success text, and you get advanced options for CSS. And right here in the form block, the first thing we see is this label here, live. And if you recall, we said that for this tutorial, we're just going to be in test mode. And anyways, when you build an e-commerce store, you should always start in test mode. So let's change this to test. Now, very important, don't forget you need to go back to live mode once the website is live, obviously. And you need to do the same thing for the payment processor. As we saw earlier, we put the Stripe payment processor in test mode. So once you go live, you need to change Stripe in live mode and you need to change the form in live mode also. But for the time being, we are in test mode. So next, I can add a store logo image. Once again, I'm going to upload an image. Select the file I just uploaded, click on choose, and there you go. Next, I can customize what I want in this form. So here I got an email field, a name field. Here I got an address field. Now, depending on where your store is based, you may have to legally ask the address of your customers, but maybe not. So in this case, for example, let's remove the shipping address because it's an ebook. Now, if I wanted to add more elements to this form, I would click on the plus sign in the top left corner. Then I would scroll down to Surecard and here I get all the Surecard widgets. So let's say I wanted to add the shipping address back. I could just click on it and there you go. And then I can just click on the little arrows to change its position. But once again, I don't need the shipping address. So let me just remove this and then let's just update our form. Okay, next there are a few ways we can link a button to a product page. So for the first one, you want to go to Surecard, Products, then open a product. And in the pricing box, here you can see a copy links button. So I'm going to click on this. And here we have a few links and short codes. So let me copy the first one. So this is a buy link. So I'm just going to copy this. Then in WordPress, I want to go to all pages. And then I'm going to hover over the books page, which is the one we want to edit. And click on edit. Okay, now let's scroll down. So first of all, let me click where it says $5. And if you recall, it was $9. Next, I click on the call to action sub tab. And where it says link, I'm just going to paste the code that we just copied. Then click on update. And if you go back to the front end and refresh, if I scroll down, now I can click on the purchase button and it's taking me straight to our checkout page. Yeah, it's that easy. Now let's repeat the process for another book. So once again, share cart, products, and let's open this one, the second one we created. Click on copy links, and let's copy our buy link. Next, back to editing our page. I'm just going to change the pricing here. And with our info box selected, let's paste the link. Click on update. Now I'm back in the front end. And by the way, because we clicked on the first book and added it to our cart, it shows here. And if you click on it, it opens a beautiful off canvas panel. So let's close this. Let's refresh our page. And as you can see now, it shows the right price. And if we click on it, once again, we arrive on our beautiful checkout page. Now, as I told you earlier on, there are a few sub options here. So we got some short codes. The first one is add to cart button. So I'm just going to copy all of it. And now back in editing our books page, let me scroll back up. And here I'm going to click on this button and remove this block. And then I'm going to click on the plus sign to add a new widget. And I'm going to start typing short code. Okay, let me just drag and drop it underneath our text. So let me close this. And here where it says write short code here, I'm just going to right click and paste the short code that we just copied. Let's duplicate this block. And back on our products page, I'm going to copy the second short code. Copy. And back in editing our books page, 
I'm just going to paste the second shortcode. Then click on update. And now if I go back to the front end and if I refresh, okay, let's scroll down and we see we have two buttons here. Now, of course, we could style those so it looks better, but it's just to give you an idea of what this shortcode does. So the first one is add to cart. And now if I click on it, as you can see, it added the right product to the cart. So let me remove this. And the second one is the buy knife button. And it's taking me straight to our checkout page. Okay, so that was the first way of linking to your products, but there is another way. So back in editing our page, I'm just going to remove both shortcodes by selecting the blocks and then clicking on the three dots, click on remove shortcode. And next, I'm just going to click on the plus sign to add a new widget. Scroll down to share cart. And here I have buy button and add to cart button. So let me just click on it. So this is my buy button and here I can select my products. So I'm going to select the second one and click on create buy button. And now with my button selected on the right hand side, I can change the name. So I'm going to call it buy now. Click on update. And next, let me repeat the operation. So plus sign. I scroll down to share card and this time I'm going to add a add to card button. Select the product. And actually, I'm just going to add an exclamation mark and click on update. And now if I go back to the front end and refresh, now let me scroll down. And once again, I got my two buttons. You can see they're not the same ones because I added the exclamation mark. So we sure that it's our new buttons, but the behavior is the same. So buy now, and it takes us to our checkout page. Let me go back and add to cart. And there you go. So as you saw, whether we click on the first or the second product, we always land on the same checkout page. But what if you want to customize checkout? So the first step in WordPress is to go to Surecart Forms. And this is the checkout form that was automatically created. But we want to click on Add New, give it a title. And here we can choose a starting design. So we have the default option, one column, or the full page in two columns. So let me select the full page. And by the way, you get more options here, simple, sections, two columns, donations, and invoice. So let me scroll back up, click on Next. Next, you want to add a product. So I'm going to pick this one. Then you can select your preferred product options. Either the customer must purchase all options, one of the options, or can select multiple options. Let's keep the first one. And I'm not going to use a custom thank you page, but if I wanted, once again, I could enable it and search for the page I had just created. But once again, let's keep it simple here. Next, click on Create. And this is our default form. So once again, don't forget, let's put this in test mode because we're still testing our website. And I'm going to remove the address field. But at this stage, it's exactly the same page as the general checkout page. How can we customize this? So for example, we could put a block quote just after our image here. So let's click on the plus sign. Let me type block. Here we go. Here's a Spectre widget, so block quotes. And let's say that we wanted to put this block quote right here, just to motivate our potential client. So as usual, you can customize widgets here on the right hand side. So let's go to Twitter icon and let's disable the icon. You don't want people to leave this page at this stage in the purchasing process. You just want to show the quote. So now let's click on publish. Great. So now we created our custom form, but we still need to link it to a custom page. So back in WordPress, we are still in share card forms. And now I'm just going to refresh this page. And now we can see our new custom checkout page. And here on the right hand side, you see we have a short code. So we want to copy this short code. And next, you want to go to Pages, Add New, and let's call it Checkout This Dark Road to Mercy. Next, click on Type to choose a block, click on the plus sign, and let's select Shortcode. And now I'm just going to paste the shortcode we just copied and click on Publish. And next, back in Pages, All Pages, Locate the new page you created, hover over it, right click 
and click on copy link. And now back in editing our book page, let's scroll down. We're going to select this button and then we're going to click on the plus sign to add a new widget. And I'm just going to click on buttons. Now I don't need both of these, so let me just remove one. Let me select the text and type buy now. And then in the options on the right hand side where it says link, I'm just going to remove the pound sign and paste the link we just copied. Now let me click on update. And if I go back to the front end, let me refresh. Let me scroll down and if I click on buy now, as you can see, it's taking me to our custom checkout page. You can see the layout is different and we can see our block quote here. Now, of course, we could make it look much nicer, but the idea here is for you to understand how you can link to a custom checkout page with its custom checkout form. Okay, before we can take a look at our customer's journey, one thing you may want to do is to link the customer dashboard that was automatically created by Shortcard to the icon here in the navigation. So by the way, this is our dashboard. You got plans, downloads, payment methods, order history, account, and your customers can just log out. How beautiful. So let me show you how we can link this icon to your customer's dashboard. So the first step is to go to all pages and locate the customer dashboard. Then you want to hover over the link and where it says view, you're going to right click and click on copy link. Next, you want to go to Astra, customize, and then you're going to hover over the elements and specifically the icon here. Click on the little pencil icon and now here on the left hand side where it says login URL, you want to remove the initial URL and we're just going to paste the link that we just copied. Then click on publish. And now if we go back to the front end before we refresh the page, initially this icon was linked to the traditional WordPress login page. So if I click on it, there you are. Now let me go back and let me refresh. And now if I click on it, as you can see, you can sign into your account and experience this beautiful dashboard. Okay, now let's put ourselves in the shoes of our customer, shall we? So my customer journey starts here and I know this author, so let me go straight to the books page. I can't wait for this new book and that's the one I want. So let me click on purchase. Then I'm just going to fill in the details. And here is my card number. Now this is a test mode, so this is a generic card number and click on purchase. And there you go. Thanks for your order. Your payment was successful and your order is complete. A receipt is on its way to your inbox. Continue. And there you go. I'm straight in my inbox. And here I can set a password. And I can see that I currently don't have any plans and I can see my download file that I just purchased. I can also see my payment history and add payment methods. And this info is not stored on your website, so it's perfectly safe. So here I can see my test payment. Let me go back. I can see my order history, but right now I want to download my file. So let me click on the file and now I can click on download. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. And there you go. And now I can open my PDF file. So as you can see, that gives a great and professional experience for your customers. Now as a customer, if I want to download my receipt or invoice, I can just click on my order and then click on download receipt invoice. And there you go. And from here, I can download the PDF or print my invoice. So as you can see, Surecard is a professional solution that's very easy to set up. And of course, emails are automatically sent to the shop owner and to the customer. So this is the customer inbox. And bear in mind that as an administrator in WordPress, you can go to Surecart, then Notifications. And if you scroll down, you can customize many of the emails. All you have to do is click on Edit. So if you made it this far, I'm so proud of you. Because today you've learned how to create an e-commerce store with Surecart. And you should now be able to sell digital products in no time. And we did all of this just with the free version. So just imagine what could be achieved with some of the additional features of the premium plans. And if you are interested, I'll put the link in the description below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really counts. And if you want more of these type of videos, make sure you subscribe. And by the way, if you haven't seen this video yet, make sure you watch our video about how to use Sure Members with Sure Card to create a membership website.